Hey everyone, Doug here. Uh, I wanted to share with you some of the microphones that I use on a consistent regular basis. These are the ones that I've come to depend on in a wide variety of different situations. Uh, specifically today I want to talk about my wired microphones. I'll do another video about the wireless systems that I have and I've kind of already done a lot of that in a prior video a few years ago. Most of that still applies. So if you're looking for that, uh, here's here's a link to that video. But uh, today we're talking about wired microphones. So I'm going to talk about my, my nine most commonly used, sort of my favorites, uh, mic mics that I use for, for doing video and audio production. So before I get into that, though, I know people are going to ask. So right up front, I'm recording this on an Audio-Technica AT875R right now. This is a shotgun microphone. It's just barely out of frame up here. Uh, this is a pretty affordable shotgun microphone. It's only about $170. The sound quality is pretty decent on it, but I don't love it on my own voice, especially here in the trailer. The hard surfaces that I have around me, desk, monitors, etc., cause some interesting reflections, which cause some strange phase, phase issues here. So, I at this point, I'm using the microphone more out of convenience than, than, the, loving, than loving the way that it actually sounds. So... Anyway, so yes, it is, a, it is a decent mic, actually a good mic, but uh, in this particular scenario, it's not my favorite. I generally prefer using my over-the-ear headset that I wear on this channel quite a bit. So anyway, with that said, let's actually jump right in and take a look at some of my favorite mics. All right, the first microphone that I want to mention is the AKG D5. You're hearing that one right now. So this is a handheld dynamic microphone specifically made for vocal. Uh, for those who are not familiar with that, what that means, the dynamic means that it's basically it basically has a coil and uh, a, a diaphragm that's attached to that, and the movement of the diaphragm generates a, a, co a magnetic field in, uh, in within a magnet, which is picked up by the coil, sort of like a speaker acting in reverse. In fact, it's exactly like a speaker acting in, re in reverse. So that's one method of generating audio. Uh, this is a dy dynamic microphone. Um, it has a supercardioid pickup pattern, which means it's most sensitive when pointed directly at the audio source. And then as you get off axis or off to the side, the response drops off quite a bit. So you're, you're able to avoid picking up audio sources that are not directly in front of the mic. Uh, supercardioid versus regular cardioid also means that it has a little bit of pickup at the rear, although that's not, it's not too prominent on this one. Uh, so this might not necessarily be the best choice for on-stage use when you have floor wedge monitors. But in most other on-stage situations, this is a, a great mic to have. So uh, the most popular mic in the industry for that use is the Shure SM58, which I will briefly demonstrate in a minute, but I don't love that mic. I like this one much better. I think this one has a smoother overall response. It has a more pleasing low end, and it has a little bit, uh, little bit brighter high end on it for a little bit additional clarity. So anyway, so this is the AKG D5. I have four of these in the wired version and six or eight or so in wireless. And I use these quite a bit whenever I can. However, there is another mic that I prefer to use over this one even for that same application. And I'll talk about that in a minute. This microphone is the Shure SM58. And this is not one of my go-tos. I do have a bunch of these. When people require it, and this is uh, very often a microphone specified on a writer contract, so uh, I do have them, and I use them when, I, when I'm required to, but otherwise I try to avoid this microphone. I find this mic to be a little bit too honky, um, too much uh, presence in the upper end, well not presence, but too much, too much uh, upper mid-range, uh, and I find that to be kind of grating, especially on a voice like mine. I don't really love this mic. I typically find that when sound engineers use this mic, they're using it because, well, it's super rugged. You know, you can't you can't destroy this thing. You can hammer nails with this microphone, and it would still work. Uh, but I, th I find in a lot of cases that they're using this microphone because it specifically has that honkiness to it, which allows it to cut through a mix without having to do any equal equalization. Uh, to me, that's lazy, and I think uh, you get a better mix when you actually take the time to equalize properly for each audio source and use a more neutral microphone. Uh, AKG D5 is not neutral, but it has a more neutral character than the SM58 does. In a lot of situations where people ask me to use the SM58, I will actually use the Beta 58A instead. This is a close sibling of the SM58, but in my opinion, this one sounds a lot better than the SM58. So a lot of times when people ask me specifically to use the SM58, I will ask if the Beta 58 is okay. 
because it is a better microphone overall. But I still prefer the AKG D5 over even this one. My real go-to microphone when it comes to handheld on onstage vocal use is this one, the AKG C5. It looks an awful lot like the D5. There's no question about that. The only, the only way to visually tell them apart is the writing of the word condenser up on uh, the top ring. But uh, this is a condenser microphone rather than a dynamic, which means that it picks up audio in an entire, entirely different way than the dynamic. So it uses a diaphragm that uh, has an electric charge on it, and then as it moves, it changes the amount of electric charge that's present on it. It acts like a capacitor that happens to be moving. In fact, in a lot of regions of the world, they call these capacitor microphones. But anyway, so that allows them to have a much lighter weight mechanism that moves, which means it responds better to high-frequency signals. So this microphone has some additional clarity, uh, a, a more accurate high-end than a dynamic would, although I do find the D5 has a pretty good high-end response on it. So anyway, this microphone is really a, a great choice for, for vocal. And one problem with condensers on stage is they tend to be worse for picking up feedback. However, AKG has this very well controlled on this mic. So I, this is my normal microphone for on-stage use. I've used this thing countless times, and I have a pile of these things. I only have the one wired one, but I have probably close to 20 wireless C5s, and they have worked great. Um, it's a, a great microphone in a lot of different situations. I have a good friend who's a professional vocalist, and a couple years ago we tried... Every mic that I own, and we borrowed a bunch of microphones from others to see what microphones she actually preferred on her voice for even studio recording. And of all the microphones we tested, this one was the one she liked best on her vocal. And so she bought one, and she tours with it. So that's when, whenever she gigs, that's the mic she uses. So it's a great choice. I, I love the sound of this one. Um, it's uh, a great go-to handheld uh, vocal microphone. Okay, this is probably my favorite mic overall. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone, which means it has a nice big element in there to pick up sound, and it uses elect uh, uses basically the capacitor technique for for generating a signal. So this microphone is mostly used in studios. Uh, that's kind of where I've used mine the most, my home studio. Uh, but it's it's it is phenomenal microphone. It has a very accurate sound quality to it. Uh, very clear, very crisp, very clean. Uh, this microphone has very, very low self noise, which means internally the electronics generate very, very little noise. Its rating is 6 dBA, which is extremely low. Um, I have used this thing to pick up sound sources from a long distance. I did some testing a couple years ago where I placed this at one end of my house, and then I, I walked to the other end of the house and spoke in kind of a quiet, hushed voice, and the microphone was still able to pick me up over 60 feet away. Pretty impressive. One of the cool things about this microphone is that it has various pickup patterns, so I can actually press buttons on here to adjust the pickup pattern. So if I come over here, this is an omnidirectional pickup pattern, so it picks up sounds from both the front and the back and the side as well, whereas when I put it in its normal cardioid, you'll hear sounds mostly from the front and onto the side and the back. It's much, much, much quieter. So you're, you've got nine different choices there on pickup patterns from omnidirectional through cardioid all the way to one's called figure eight. So it's, that's switchable right on the mic itself. And <clears throat> let me switch it over here to figure eight <clears throat> as I turn it over and show you the other thing. So it also has variable pads on here. So you can reduce the audio level between zero and 18 decibels. And then it's got high pass filter settings of 0, 40, 80, and 160 hertz. So if you need to roll off uh, low frequencies, bass, low, low bass or whatever, you can do that right in the microphone. You don't have to, don't have to do it in your, your audio mixer. This is a super flexible microphone. I'll switch it back to cardioid here. There we go. This is a super flexible microphone. It works on a lot of different things. It's fantastic on vocals. It works great on guitar. It's my definitely my go-to microphone when I need to mic piano. Uh, it would be fantastic for drum overheads. It's very useful on most other drums. Probably not necessarily a kick drum, but uh, it works on most everything. There aren't very many things this microphone isn't good at. It's a little bit expensive. This microphone sells for about $1,100. Although, if you're patient, if you if you want one and you're patient, you can go onto eBay and find one selling brand new even for between seven and 800 So, yeah, if this, if this is the sort of microphone that interests you... Uh, save your pennies and get one. This is kind of my 
go-to microphone for in-studio use. Aside from that, I don't use it very much. I wanted to preserve this one, make sure that this one works for the rest of my life. So I'm very cautious with it. I, I don't use it when I don't have to. Uh, I don't want it to get knocked over, lost, stolen, whatever. I'm, so I use this mic pretty sparingly. But overall, uh, this is a fantastic mic. Now I chose the XLS variant of this. AKG actually makes two different versions. Uh, they also have an XL2. The XL2 is brighter. It has a more crisp sound to it, which which is nice, but at the same time, uh, I, I generally prefer more neutral sounding microphones, and this, this one is closer to a fully neutral sound than the XL2, and so I actually specifically chose the XLS variant of the 414. So anyway, that's the AKG C414 XLS. This next microphone is a close cousin of the AKG C414. Uh, this is the AKG C214. So this is a couple of models down in AKG's lineup. Uh, but this actually has something in common. This uses the same pickup element as the C414. However, the electronics are, are quite different. So even though there are similar parts between the two, this one has a different sound to it. And you're probably hearing that here on this video today. Um, so... This microphone is quite a bit cheaper. It's about a third the price. It typically sells for $350, although right now it's a little bit more expensive, I presume, due to uh, component shortages. But uh, anyway, so this this is a pretty clean microphone. Uh, 12 decibels of self-noise on this one. Uh, it has a reasonably neutral response to it, although it definitely has a bit of a presence boost on the higher end. Uh, a little bit more crisp than some of the other mics that are in in this price range. Uh, but at the same time, it's not as smooth as the 414. So it's, it's a good mic. There's no question about it that it's a good mic, especially at its price point. But it's not my best microphone that I, that I own. Ironically, though, and you've never seen me use this on the channel, but this is the microphone that I use more than anything else. So I have another copy of this one that I have on my computer that I use when I'm doing Zoom calls and everything like that. So anytime I'm online chatting with uh, my, my business uh, partners and whatnot, so uh, this is the microphone that I use for that. Uh, and it sounds real, especially good on that. You know, My audio quality always blows away that of everybody else that's on, on a Zoom call with me. So anyway, so this microphone... It has a low-pass filter option, and it also has a, a pad on it as well, although it's not nearly as flexible as the 414. So, anyway, I really do like this microphone. Um, like I said, it is the one that I technically use most, more than anything else, but just not for live use. Uh, this microphone is fantastic on vocals. It's very great on it's great on pianos and guitars and most other instruments. Uh, it'd be great as an overhead for drums. Again, although again, I probably wouldn't use this on kick drum. It'd be fantastic on toms and snares and everything else. Everything uh, else for brass, this might be a little bit bright, but you could certainly use it and EQ it a little bit in post. But uh, anyway, so this is a pretty versatile mic, the second most versatile of the mics that I'm going to be demonstrating here today, and it's certainly among my favorites. The next microphone that I wanted to mention is this one, the Heil PR40. Let me face the, the name forward. There we go, Heil PR40. If you spend much time watching YouTube, you've, I'm sure you've seen a number of podcasters use this microphone. There's a reason for it. It's a, it's a very broadcasty sounding microphone. Uh, but the biggest reason this microphone is preferred over a lot of others is its rear, uh, its off-axis rejection. So as I move off to the side, you'll find that the audio almost disappears, especially if, if it's pointed the opposite direction as the sound source. So it has 40 decibels of rejection at the rear, which is absolutely phenomenal. You just don't find any other mics that do that. So even the venerable Shure uh, SM7B doesn't have that much rejection at the rear. So, But that said, um, I don't love the way this microphone sounds on me. I find it just kind of grating. You know, the upper mid-range on this mic is a little bit too... There's, well, there's too much of it, and I find that it's not, not a pleasing sound on my voice. And in fact, on me in particular, this microphone almost sounds like it's distorting, even when audio levels are completely in check. You may be even hearing that now. And for that reason, I don't use it very much on my own voice. I do use it on the others a fair amount, but on me in particular, it doesn't sound great. You've seen me use it here on the channel a handful of times, but generally speaking, I only get this microphone out when I have to be running the air conditioner at the same time I'm shooting. 
So otherwise, I generally avoid this microphone on my own voice. But but again, this actually is a microphone that a lot of people choose. It's very popular, especially with podcasters. It has a very radio sound to it, uh, somewhat like the Shure SM7B or uh, Electro Voice EV20. Um, they have kind of a similar characteristic to it. This does have a little bit more of a high end than most other dynamic mics. This is a dynamic microphone, I should mention that. It has more of a high end uh, response on it than a lot of other dynamic microphones do. So it sounds a little bit more like a condenser, but at the same time, it does have a lot of the same body of a dynamic microphone to it. So uh, kind of a hybrid in terms of what it sounds like compared to some of the other microphones that are out there. This microphone is about $329, which for what it is, is not a bad deal. Uh, but if you don't need the radio sound, this is probably not a great choice. This next microphone is a small diaphragm condenser, which means it operates off the same capacitor principle as the large diaphragm condensers, but it has a much smaller element in the front of it. And this is also in a pencil form factor, so we also so we often refer to these as pencil mics. This one is the Rode NT5, and this, really one, this one really is my go-to in terms of a microphone that I use for micing instruments, and I also specifically use this one for micing choirs and for micing the ambience of a room. So for live use, very often we hook into the PA, uh, the front of house system, to get the majority of the audio, but you never have audience audio uh, reaction for, for, from the front of house. And so very often uh, I will set up a pair of these in the venue in order to add that as part of the audio mix for, for live use. So anyway, this, this is a very good sounding mic. It's pretty neutral. It does have uh, it does have a little bit of a boost on the higher frequencies, just to add some additional clarity. But overall, it is a fairly neutral sound to it. So um, I have a pair of these. Generally speaking, when you buy these, you probably want to do buy them in pairs. They very often used for stereo. But uh, yeah, so I have a pair of these, and they are the first microphone that I choose whenever I need to pick up an instrument, uh, whether that be uh, guitar or piano whatever you know this is generally my first choice for that especially for live use it has pretty good off-axis rejection although it is not perfect uh it says a cardioid pattern they do sell alternate L uh, capsules that you can put on the top in order for to get an omnidirectional pickup pattern so it picks up the same in, in all directions whereas this one picks up primarily at the front but uh anyway so this I've had this microphone for probably close to 20 years at this point. I paid three, about $450 for the, for the pair of them, and that seems to be fairly close to what modern pricing is. It seems to be closer to 500 now. But uh, these are great microphones for picking up instruments. And kind of ironically, even though it's not made for vocal use, I think I prefer the sound of this one on my own voice over all the other microphones that I own. I think it kind of mellows out some of the less pleasing tones to my, to my vocal compared to everything else so yeah so not made for vocals but it does it can do a pretty decent job of it so anyway that's the Rode NT5 this next microphone is uh, the Octava MK012 and I don't have a pop filter for this one so I'm gonna have to be trying trying to be really careful to avoid plosives on this one but this is another small diaphragm condenser uh, again with the cardioid pickup pattern so very similar in terms of form factor and the intended applications com uh, compared to the Rode NT5. Uh, this microphone has become pretty popular over the years. I bought mine before anybody knew what they were so I've got four of these and I only paid $99 a piece for them. These days you pay more like 200 to 220 for each one so uh, the price has gone up with its popularity. So this is it's not a super, super neutral sounding mic, but it is generally a good sounding mic. It's, it works for a lot of applications. Vocals are not really a great application for this one, but it would be, it's great on a lot of different instruments. It sounds really good on guitar. It sounds really good on piano. Uh, brass, it's a little little harsh, a little, little bright, but uh, a lot of, there's a lot of instruments that work really well with, with this particular mic. I also use this one on crowds and uh, chorus, uh, choirs as well quite a bit uh, whenever I need to to mic a large group of people. These are one of my go-tos. I will use my NT5s first, and unless I happen to need four identical mics, in which case I will get out my Octava MK012s. So anyway, uh, this is, uh, again, another small diaphragm condenser, a fairly bright response to it, very clean, very clean though, um, and just kind of a, generally speaking, of a pretty nice pleasing tone overall. 
Okay, uh, this is the Audio Technica BPHS One. This is my go-to for broadcast headsets, and also what I, is what I use for the intercom here in my trailer. So this has a pretty decent sound quality to it, especially for a relatively inexpensive headset. This he this headset is about two hundred dollars, which in the broadcast world is pretty inexpensive. But I find the sound quality on this one to be pretty good. It's it's really good for intercom use as well. Everybody can always hear and understand what I'm saying whenever I'm using this microphone. So this is my go-to here in the trailer for, for intercom headsets. It also is what we use when we have commentators uh, that are going to be an, uh, commentating for a sporting event. Uh, I have three of these, and then when I work the sporting events, I have another company that I work with very often, and they've got a pair of these as well. So between the two of us, we've got five pairs, which covers a lot of, of potential uses there so all right this last microphone is kind of an unusual pick and it's one that i think most people who watch this channel have probably never used and a lot most people have never heard of this is a sony microphone it's a this is a stereo microphone it's model ecm ms 957 this uses a technique that's called mid side or ms in order to pick up uh, sound sources in stereo, which basically means it has two microphones internally, one that points straight out the end, and then one that's sort of oriented this direction and picks up sound left and right. And then it uses electronics in order to combine those two microphones to produce the stereo image. So let's give you kind of a little bit of a sample here. So this is over here on the left side, and then this is over here on the right. Uh, this microphone, uh, has two different pickup patterns. So that was 120 degrees. And then I'll switch it over here to 90 degrees, which narrows the stereo image considerably. So if I come over here to the right or to the left, it probably doesn't uh, pan to one side quite as heavily as it did on the 120 degree setting. And I'll put that back. Uh, this is actually meant as a more of a consumer style microphone. It shipped with just an eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter cable, uh, not XLR, which meant that they meant for it to be used in things like mini disc recorders at the time. This is a pretty old model. I've had this microphone for probably close to 20 years. Um, and it was originally for consumer use for, for like mini discs and that kind of thing. Um, but it actually has pretty good sound quality to it. I've been pretty impressed with it. And uh, I've also found that by just been doing a little bit of investigation, I mean, I noticed that the bottom was an XLR output, 5-pin XLR output, and I did some, some research and found that it actually is a professional balance quality signal coming out of there. Uh, so all I had to do is build my own cable in order to separate the left and right uh, balance signals into 3-pin XLR, so I did that. And uh, as a result, I get a nice-sounding microphone that is, it interfaces with a professional audio system, no problem whatsoever. So... Uh, this microphone is one that I use for small groups of people singing to give it kind of a, to make sure that I have a nice stereo image. Um, also, I use this for ambience with uh, audiences. Or another use would be, for example, on in a sporting or sporting arena. So, if you want to capture the, what's going on in a, with a stereo image, this microphone is really good for that. I use this as the microphone to pick up what was going on on the court at the volleyball tournament that, went, that we shot here a few months ago. And it worked great for that. It was a fantastic choice. So um, this microphone originally sold for, I think, about 270 to $300. Although, since nobody knows what it is, you, you can pick these things up on eBay for next to nothing. I bought one a few weeks ago for just $60. Didn't come with any cables or anything like that, So, that's, but that's fine. You, you want to make your own with this one anyway. So anyway, it's got a nice, nice pleasing ca character to it. Uh, fairly even response, a little boost in the high end like a lot of the others, just to kind of make it sound uh, more accurate than it probably really is. People tend to like having a little bit of a, a, a presence, high-end boost on their microphones. But uh, anyway, uh, the other fun thing I found that this is really good at is miking guitars. Uh, so I placed this microphone at the 12th fret, and I've tried it where I orient the pickup pattern both horizontally, so one side picks up kind of the the fret noise that's going on, and the other side picks up the more the body of the guitar. Works fairly well for that, but if I, if I find if I turn it the other direction where it's picking up the low string on lower strings on one channel and the higher strings on the other, that it gives uh, a kind of a cool sound to it. And it's not something you can really only do very accurately with a mid side pickup like this one has. Uh, some of the other methods like XY and Blue Line. 
don't necessarily work quite as well in that particular application. So anyway, this has become a go-to microphone for me in a lot of situations where I need to pick up stereo and I want to do it with, with decent accuracy and I want to do it with kind of an unobtrusive, fairly small package. Uh, so anyway, the Sony ECM MS957. So those are all the mics that I wanted to share today. I Again, I probably will do a, a separate video at some point about some of my picks for wireless microphones. Uh, but for in terms of wired microphones, this collection of nine are the ones that I use more often than not. Not the only ones that I use, but the ones I use more often than not. So I have a pretty extensive mic collection at this point. I think I have over 100 different mics. Um, not 100 different models, but 100 different mics. And uh, I, I switch it up quite a bit. And that actually brings me to a point that I wanted to make here. There is no such thing as the best microphone. It just doesn't exist. And the more I've done audio over the years, the more I've learned that it just takes experience with given models, and a lot of cases just trying out different models of mics on different sound sources like vocalists or whatever to find the one that has the right character for what you're trying to achieve. And it even varies based on what you're trying to do at the same time. So one style of music would be better, might be better with one mic on one vocalist than another style of music with the same vocalist. So you really got to learn your microphones really well and still even then you probably want to spend some time doing some research, setting up multiple mics and taking the time in order to figure out which one works best. In addition to that, there are a lot of factors that come into play more than the sonic character of a microphone in terms of the quality of your recording. So mic placement is probably the biggest one. So even anytime you move a mic around, it's going to change the quality of the sound in a pretty noticeable, very uh, observable way. So spend time to move a mic uh, in different positions. Make sure that you're getting the best quality sound wherever you may be placing it. That will have more of an impact on the quality of the output than very often than choosing a different model of microphone. The environment that you're recording in also plays an enormous role as well. As mentioned, I'm shooting here on a shotgun microphone. Uh, that is not only picking up me, but it's also picking up reflections off a lot of the hard surfaces in here, which causes some interesting sound artifacts, some some ways, some weird phasing issues, which means that this sounds very different than it would if the microphone was placed right up against my mouth. The ratio between me and the sound around me changes quite a bit based on where that microphone is positioned. Uh, so, especially in an environment like this that's not treated acoustically. I mean, I have carpet on the walls, but other than that, I really haven't done any acoustical treatment here in the trailer. Mic placement and environment can have a much bigger effect on the quality of your sound than which microphone you happen to select. So, if anybody out there is trying to tell you that there is a sp the best microphone for a given application, it basically means that they don't know what they're talking about, because anybody who has real experience with audio, it's a studio, live, whatever, will tell you that mic placement and uh, acoustical treatment of the environment, placing uh, your sound sources farther apart when need be or whatever, will have more of an impact on the quality of the sound than specifically which model of microphone you happen to choose. So that said, though, there are certain microphones that, are, that tend to be better for certain applications than others. So it's nice to have a wide variety to pick up, to pick up different sound sources in different environments. Uh, to cover, sort of cover your bases in terms of all the different options that you may be in, all the different situations you might be encountering. So anyway, I would love to hear from you guys which microphones you actually like to use, which are your go-to mics for lots of different situations. So why have you picked the microphones that you have and why do you use them in specific situations? So leave me a, a message down in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from everybody about which microphones you happen to be using and why. But there might actually be a better place to discuss this in the comment section. I would still love you free to leave comments, but if you want to get into more in-depth discussions, a better place to do that is over on my Discord channel, so djp.li slash Discord. We've got a whole bunch of video industry professionals that are there, and we talk about all things related to video production. So if you haven't already joined, it's free to do so, so just go to that link, djp.li slash Discord, and if you haven't already created an account, it's very easy to do so. But that's kind of where we are concentrating most of our discussions these days about most things related to audio and video and, and production issues and equipment and everything in general. So anyway, um, if you want to hear samples of how my voice sounds on all the different microphones that I own, there's a link popping up on your screen. It's uh, djp.li slash DJ Mic Tests. And I've taken recordings on all the different mics that I have at 3, 6, sometimes 12 and 24 inches in a 
audio controlled, acoustically created uh, situation. So if you want to hear those microphones in a very clean environment on my vocal, uh, you, can, you can listen to that there. So I've been doing that for over six years now. Every time I get a new mic, I put it through its paces and occasionally update those as well. So anyway, that's going to do it for right now. So thanks everyone for watching and have a fantastic day.